Good morning, West USA. Welcome to another edition of our Monday morning webinar where I am still recovering from the greatest weekend of football that I have Agreed. ever seen in awesome. my entire life. It was awesome. It was fantastic. So uh, uh, I'm just going to stick to this slide until I get the, the keyboard from Nick here. Um, no. Because, no. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate everybody uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, great morning unpacked for us this morning. Of course, uh, Todd's going to come in and give us the year end numbers. Take a look at 2021. And I'm telling you, uh, 2022 is moving just as fast. Uh, of course, we got Matt Baker here with the uh, Booksman Baker team difference. And our president CEO, Clint Fouts, is uh, going to stop by for our annual uh, state of the brokerage and to let us know uh kind of a recap on last year and what we got to look forward to in the next year. And then if we got time, I'm going to throw out a special uh, three pack. So um, special, it, special. It's, this is how to present offers in this market, but if we don't get to it. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do it next week. As always, if you got any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com. Uh, uh, my boss is in the room now, so just be <laughs> kind to me. Uh, <laughs> All right, some announcements. All right, every year, I we I, this, every year we want to hear from you. Uh, this is your chance to uh, give us, a, you know, give us a report card of yeah. how we are doing as a brokerage. So you should uh, have a link in your inbox. And every year, first. Uh, uh, we, we do three drawings, so one for $300 in gas cards, one for 150 and one for 50 And as I always like to say, and I can say it because I'm an agent here, um, if you don't take the time to fill this out, yeah. don't complain. Yeah. Shame you on know, you. Later on. So this is your chance to let us know how we're doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, we take these things very, very serious. We take your recommendations very, very serious. So, so the email is going to go out this morning. should hit around 930 uh, into your inbox. So take a look for that. If you don't get the email, send us an email, nick at westusa.com. And we'll get you the survey ASAP. Yeah, it was amazing. Last year, I won all three gas cards. No, uh, you did uh, not. 100%. <laughs> all right, a few more announcements. This Thursday, Keith Flynn has got our next uh, training class. This is virtual. As always, mm -hmm. all events and links to sign up for these events can be found on the dashboard. Uh, but this is going to be on Canva. So this is your solution to hiring a graphic designer. So it's a great opportunity to learn how to do some of your own flyers and things yeah. like that. So that's coming up this Thursday. Uh, this is one of uh, your last opportunities. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you don't get this one, yeah. I got nothing. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> tomorrow from 9 to 12. Um, this is going to be your opportunity to, to meet your uh, your your NAR code of ethics class, your triannual um, requirements. So, of course, that is going to be done uh, tomorrow. Uh, and another uh, CE class coming up this Wednesday, January 26, three hours of legal issues. So what a way to uh, get to start off the year, get some of your CE hours underway. So the CE class Wednesday is this one up here. Mm -hmm. The one on the 27th, which is Thursday, mm -hmm. is the NAR Tranial. There's nothing tomorrow. But I, I love you, Mike. Give your view. It, it says yeah, Tuesday. it's that Tuesday. It should have said Thursday. Yep. I'm Ron Burgundy. Marketing. I just read what's on the telephone. <laughs> here. That's not why you don't want to hire graphic design. You <laughs> Nick did this in Canva. <laughs> All right. If you were new to USUSA, or you've never attended one of our agent orientations, uh, our next one is going to be next Monday, January 31st, 1030 to 12. Uh, you can, of course, uh, you, you know, register on the, the, the dashboard for this. Uh, Nick, is this in person as well now? Are we doing the hybrid? I think we're going to invite people in, yeah. So we're going to do it in the large training room. It'll be in person if you want to come in, and we'll also do it uh, Zoom. All right. Uh, yeah, Zoom. Perfect. All right. We are uh, working back to bringing back React. Really, really excited about this. Uh, this is one of those things that uh, we've truly missed uh, because of COVID, not being able to have everybody in. So uh, starting Tuesday, February 1st, this is your introduction to a lot of the things when it comes down to technology, especially with transaction, desk training, uh, listing presentation. So a lot of good stuff. So get signed up for this. Uh, all sessions are going to be held here at the North Phoenix office. So really excited. So if you're if you've joined West USA uh, in the last two years and you're not yeah. familiar with React, definitely check this out. Um, you're going to want to you're going to want to attend these classes. And React is in person because these classes are more than just introductions. You actually get systems built 
for you. So you will leave each module with things ready to go to be able to install in your business immediately after you leave each of the modules. You don't have to take all of them in the same order. We are going to do this monthly. So uh, we're bringing this back. If you have any questions, talk to your office staff, your office manager, reach out to us directly. <clears throat> but we are really excited to have React yeah. back. Yeah. And this has all been redone. So it's not the old React. All right. Yeah. So, and then especially like Tuesday, you know, I mean, Check out uh, the I Found Agent websites and drip campaigns, a, a must for your business. Um, we're getting on our end, getting so much traffic on our website because of this, mobile apps and so forth. So get signed up for it. All right, so uh, we're knock. What a great, great program. I just spoke to somebody over the weekend, perfect candidate for this. Um, so at the very least, if you don't know what knock is, uh, it is an option for all of your sellers. It's a great way to get in the door. Um, and so Knox offering a uh, promotion, get a thousand dollars towards your borrower's appraisal, uh, when you work with knock. So, uh, so there's some information up there on how you can reach knock, uh, and find out. But if you've not signed up with knock yet, definitely attend one of their, uh, their onboarding sessions. Um, you, you need to know about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. All right, Matt Baker, right. what's going on in the market? Boy, those numbers aren't looking so good. It's, uh, you know, it's moving on up. And, and this week is, is Fed week. So Fed announced yeah. or will announce on Wednesday their policy. And if you remember my conversations over the last, I don't know, seven years, eight years, <laughs> that the market moves in anticipation of what the Fed's going to do. So just because the Fed announces something on Wednesday, like mm, rates are going up, it's already been going up as you can see here over you know since really the first of the year rates are consistently on their way up <sighs> big, big question is you know you know my crystal ball is a little foggy i don't really know where they're going to go my big thing is it's it's volatile it's a lot of up and down we don't typically go straight high right right you know every day is not worse rates every day over and over you get some a back and forth so just that's why you want to work with an expert that knows that so that you can kind of time it. Um, so if we let's just really quickly run through sort of my, my thoughts of this week, you know, talking about home ownership and and this is a Gallup poll. If you go to the next slide, uh, you know, it's hard to believe. But 2008, when the financial sort of mortgage you know crisis occurred, you know, how bad real estate sort of got impacted. And when you think about the recovery since then, I mean, it, it's really quite amazing. But 41 percent of folks, you know, ranked in real estate as the number one investment, which is really no surprise. But if you go to the kind of the trend and the trajectory over over the last to go to the next slide, you'll see, you know, just just the march from really 2010, you know, all the way up through to today of just how sort of real estate keeps getting better and better from from the consumer perspective on on where we're headed. And so, and I, and I would just say to th this slide and, and this slide, I would reach out to Matt and get some of this maybe stuff co-branded. This is great social, social media, media material, true. great way to get people off the fence who think that the market's going to crash. <laughs> right. And go, go to the next slide. Cause that really kind of plays right into it. Talking about just, you know, the activity and look at the buyer activity. This is national averages, but up 12 and a half percent year over year with inventory negative, you know, limited in 26%. So when you, when you look about where's prices going to go from here, folks, you know, it's yeah. like, I, I, I'm not making the news. I'm just showing it to you. I'm like, just like Mike, I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm just reading the info here. <laughs> you know, it's straightforward. Go to the next slide. You know, still, obviously, you know, you guys know this. It's multiple offers. I mean, almost everybody I'm talking to is having to go in, you know, coming soon or right the day one, trying to win, still having multiple offers, still going up against it. But again, you know, as a lender, I'm here to help you. So I'm calling lend and sellers on your behalf. I'm a seller's agent on your behalf. You know, I'm doing everything I can do to take you off of the virtual page of a Arizona prequal form and trying to make you real. I would. I would assume you guys are all doing strategies like cover letters and other things, but that other, that little, just a little bit extra can help you win. And that's really what we're trying to help you. Obviously nobody wins unless the deal closes and that helps everybody. So, so that's uh, the, the news for the day. That's what I got. All right. Appreciate it, Matt. Uh, great, great stuff. So uh, I don't know. I have several buyers I told over the holidays, buy, uh, I want to wait till uh, the new year. 
Well, they waited till the new year, and uh, <laughs> now we're up at multiple offers and all that again. So, all right, appreciate it, Matt. Great information. Thanks, Matt. All right, awesome. we're going to bring in Todd. Year end numbers, mm. pretty darn excited. We all know that last year was. Uh, was hot and amazing. So I'm actually looking forward to actually see them in yeah. numbers. Yeah, we're interested in, in showing them to you. Thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, again, today we're going over the greater Phoenix Metro market housing analysis and statistics uh, for the week ending January 24th, and we will cover the end of the year. 37 days closed on market, not by 0.9% month supply, almost a month supply. 111% absorption. We're sitting at an average list price of 759,000, an average sale price at 50. 581,000 and our look at that list price to sale price. Here's an indicator. We're going to have to see what happens with this one. 107.72%. Uh, we've seen 102, but we've never gone up as high as 107. Uh, active inventory is at 6,115. That's down 5%. Uh, pending is at 4,950 and our closed units are at 4,403 month to date. Uh, taking a look at new listings, we took 1,959 new listings last week. That was an increase of 12% over the week prior, leaving us with a days on market of 85 and a days on market close of 37. Our under $500,000 price range is starting to climb a little bit. It was at 52.8. It's now at 54.55. That means 52%, 54% of the entire MLS inventory is under 50, uh, under 500,000. This is normally at 72% prior to COVID. Uh, we'll, we'll just see where it goes. But right now it is beginning to creep up a little bit. Our $500 million dollar market at 32, very stable, normally around 20, 22%. Um, so obviously 500 to a million is where we gained uh, some of that additional product, basically because the houses that were 450 are now worth over five. Uh, and so this is uh, the area in which uh, we started gaining additional inventory. And our million dollar and up market has been averaging about 10 to 12%. It's pretty stable. Uh, the big thing here is just the, the brevity of the days on market at 108%. That's normally 220. So again, uh, for the last two years, we've just seen a significant movement in that million dollar plus, plus market. So taking a look at our spreadsheet, which is the way we all become experts, what we're able to do now, if you take a look at the sheet, is in the very middle, you have an amber column or a goldenrod color that represents 2019. We retained 2019 for 2022 uh, because it was the year prior to COVID, 2021 to the left in the salmon color. Uh, so it's same week in both of those periods. And and then to the further left of that, we have both our columns, including this past week and the week prior or the reporting week prior. So uh, let's just get right in. We had we took, like we said, 1959. Of course, we had we came out January 10th. Everybody was just coming back from the holiday and the new year. So it's always, a, you know, we take fewer listings during that week than any time. And obviously it shows we need to be above 2,500, 24, 2,500 listings on a weekly basis. If we can, then we can maintain the sales uh, level of what's, uh, you know, the attraction. So we have 6,115 total active inventory right now. We had 6,455. Slide your eyes to the right. And this is the comparison opportunity. When you can compare a number, you have an opportunity to track what direction it's going. So looking at that, we were at 5,419 uh, last year. So at 6,100, we are actually above last year's numbers. So that's a good sign, although it's less over the week over week. And of course, uh, back 2019, prior to the COVID, uh, it was 18,000 in inventory. Uh, but again, what makes up 6,115? We have uh, 607 coming soon properties, 4,987 single family detached, about 600 new home construction properties, uh, and that re leaves a remainder of 6,088 non-distressed. So again, you know, are we getting that distressed inventory? The answer so far is no, uh, and the statistics show that. Again, it's point, less than 0.3% of the entire MLS. That's 0.3 of 1% percent of the entire MLS inventory. Uh, 4,950 pending. We use this to anticipate how many people are actually in the marketplace at any one time. So 4,950 this past week, uh, 3,963 the week before. We had 5,800 people in the market last year. Uh, and again, 4,900 happens to be about right in the middle, which we've seen of 2021 and 2019. So it's a very, very comfortable, uh, stable number, uh, again, in comparison. Looking at month to date, we're at 4403. Uh, last year we were at 34. This is the first green ticker we have seen in the 
a closed activity, Mike, in over two and a half months. So we've been going red, 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 red. And of course, red, if you go back, actually is more like four and a half months worth of uh, declining volume uh, in the last quarter of last year. So a green sign here, well, at least today, <laughs> that means we're doing better than we did last year. And again, the closed, you know, if we're not seeing the inventory show up in distressed inventory, are we seeing the closings showing up in inventory? And the answer is no. So again, uh, confidence that we're not having a distressed uh, shadow inventory. Uh, 0.9, close to one month supply. That's awesome. Last year, we were at 0.8. Uh, of course, back to 2019, we were at four months supply. Um, so again, it's, it's not so much uh, how many months supply, it's do we have enough inventory to satisfy the, the consumers and give them options uh, without having to settle at the same time as really not putting a buyer in a situation. We have to look at both sides. You know, although multiple offers is a great position for a seller, it's not so good at all for a buyer. And so as a result, uh, you know, we like markets where both the buyer and the seller uh, have equal opportunity. Taking a look at the average prices again, 759. Uh, this is high. This is a this the, and again, this is the average. If you take the total number of properties in the MLS and you divide it uh, that were listed, uh, and then you divide it by the total number of, of units, uh, you're getting 759,000. That's high. Uh, and look just below that, the average sales price is 581. But again, these if you take the properties that have sold and you divide it by the number of properties that are sold, that gives you the average sale price. The increase does not mean that the that the average property in, in the MLS has gone up 28%. That's not true. Well, excuse me, let me rephrase that. That the average property has appreciated 28%. That's not true. In fact, the statistics came out uh, that we were only at 18%. Uh, looking at the days on market active, it's still exceptionally brisk, but again, it's climbing and that's a good thing. The longer it takes, the more uh, stable our market becomes. And this is the number of the day for the weekly week over week analysis. 97.8% is where we're normally at. We're at 107. It could be an anomaly just week over week, but we'll have to take a look at it because we haven't been over 100 and certainly over 102 ever. Um, so this is something that we'll be paying attention to week over week. So uh, getting into exactly what takes what took place last year versus this year. So here's the stats and running down new listings. We took a total of 10,012 new listings this past week. Uh, or this past uh, year as an average, 120,000 total. Uh, we averaged 9,500 listings in 2020. So 2021 averaged 5% more active listings uh, than we had in 2020. So this is a good sign. It meant we had more inventory. And this is the thing, you know, everybody's talking about negative, 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 negative. You have to look at the positive. And when you're out there trying to romance a client or, or, or incentivize them to get into the game, Stop looking at the negative perspective. Turn that around. And what is the positive perspective? The positive perspective was there's 5% more properties in the market in 2021 than there was in 2020. That's a good thing. Uh, we look at the next line, which basically shows us the active inventory. Uh, it was 9,499 on average. Uh, we had an average of 13,400 uh, in 2020. That was down 30%. There's your reasoning for your multiple offers, uh, making it very, very difficult. If we're not getting those 2,400 new properties every single month, uh, every single week, excuse me, then we're going to continue to see a decline in low inventory. Uh, under contract accepting backup offers, we use this as how many people are actually in the marketplace. You know, the average buyer has an agreement, a meeting of the minds with the average seller that equals an escrow. And, you know, and what took place while well, in 2021, we ended with an average of 6,787 uh, properties on average at any one time in the MLS. In 2020, we were at 64, 60, Look at that. That's only 4%. That's not a huge difference. Um, but again, it is still higher than it was in 2020, saying 2021 came away being a banner year. Closed inventory, we closed an average of 9,213, a total of 110,000 properties last year in the MLS. And again, remember, this is MLS numbers, doesn't take in consideration, you know, for sale by owners or, or new home sales. But 9,213, we averaged 8,779 in 2020. That's an increase of 5% uh, commensurate. And then you have your non-distressed inventory also increased 
10%. Uh, but look, short sales lender owned HUD, look at all the numbers on the right, half of what it was the year before. So again, you know, this shadow inventory just hasn't existed. Everybody says, well, that's because of the moratorium. Yes, you're right. However, uh, you know, the, it, as those properties leak back into the inventory, uh, we'll just consume those quickly because we have the demand. So a month's supply averaged about just over one month's supply. We averaged an even one month supply in 2020. Uh, we had 104 as an average absorption rate. And again, an average of just around one, uh, 100% uh, absorption. So those are very, very consistent from for the numbers. Uh, average sale price. So, so again, going back and just looking at this, look, 738 was the average, uh, 993 uh, in two, uh, 2021. It was 649,000. That's a 13.85% increase, not a 38% increase that you sometimes see month over month um, when we're doing the numbers because this is an, in looking at the reflection of not a point in time, but the whole average year. So so these are the numbers you need to be sharing right here with some of your clients. Average sale prices, look at that, 493. That's the third one down, 493. $1,515 a year before was $391,645. There's your 26%, closer to the 28 that we've seen average in the numbers. Uh, but again, that's not what the average property has increased in value. That's what the average property that has been sold through the MLS recently has averaged in value. Um, taking a look at the days on market, it's still rather brisk. We're averaging 84 days on market active. We were at 138 a year ago, uh, 31 days on active uh, days on market for sold. We were at 50 days on market. So that's down 30%, 35%. And then finally, our average sale price to list price retention was at 85.5% uh, average in uh, uh, in. Uh, 2021 with a 98 average in 2020. Um, so it's about a 13%. In other words, the sellers weren't giving up as much money, uh, you know, it's about 13% wise as they were before. So down here at the bottom, what I wanted you to do when you're planning your business for 2022, one of the things you want to take into consideration is what's the average market? What's the market done? Because you, if you're, if you're equal to what the market is doing organically and you're not doing anything different, your increase in your business really was just a result of the industry as a whole. Uh, and if you, maybe it's population, maybe it's whatever. But if you have an increase in your business and your business increase is an increase in excess of the numbers that you see here, then as percentages, then now if you did say for instance in 2022 you do 40% or uh, you did 40% in 2021 um you did 8% better than the market did. That is attributed to you personally. You've done something that has changed the business that you got better results than the industry did. And that's important. That's what you want to do. You want to find your secret sauce, as Mike and I always say. Uh, 4.8. So we ended with a 32% increase in the average sales volume. And that was truly because of the volume of the increases in pricing plus the increase in unit count. If you look to the right, 110,400 63 units were sold in 2021. 2020, the industry, the entire MLS industry here uh, was only at 105,349. So we had an increase of 5% in the average, uh, you know, units uh, that were sold. So if you increased 5% in your personal production, good for you. If you increased more than that, that's that means you had an effect on that marketplace. Um, the average sale price, as we had talked about above, uh, was 26,000. So you can see we've been tracking this for quite a long time. We go actually all the way back to 2007 on this, but we just don't show it because it's not as, as important. So uh, the it, real quickly, just looking at what 2020 uh, has in store, GDP for the U.S. is supposed to be strong. Uh, it's going to anticipate it that it is going to go down 20%. That means the the gross domestic product, the, the sales of all of the, you know, uh, all the sales that are attributed uh, in the economy is going to drop 20% 2023, uh, 2022, excuse me, 2023 and 2024. Four, these are the years we have to, you know, really extrapolate and be prepared for. So 2022 has to be a banner year for you guys. 2023, 24, the market's going to shift and the GDP is going to be almost 35% less than it is today. Um, unemployment, 4.1%. Uh, it's down from 8.1% in 21. That's awesome. Uh, so unemployment, the negative number is not a bad thing. That's a good thing because there's so many jobs that are out there. Population increases have, have, have helped for that. But understand what breeds population increase? Well, it could be a city, could be a state like California doing some really cool things that are driving people out of the state. Or it could be jobs. 
Uh, you know, here in Arizona, our local government has uh, a very, very strong tax base and they maneuver continually to attract companies. Look at 303. Look what you're seeing on 303 and all the Daimler Benz and you've got your uh, Amazons and your and your all of these companies that are down there. You turn around, you take a look over on the Highway 60, Superstition heading out of uh, Gilbert, heading towards uh, um, Apache Junction. Look at all the all the new uh, uh, commercial buildings that have been built basically from uh, Price Road from, you know, uh, the 101 all the way down to, to uh, Power Road. Um, so there's strong tax bases and the same thing nor in North Phoenix. You know about the Wuhan plant, the Wuhan plant, you know about the uh, Taiwan plant off of uh, the 303 and I-17. All of these things, um, you know, you've got uh, Intel bringing 3,000 new jobs to Chandler. Um, so all of these things are indicating that this is uh, going to be a 2022 is going to be a strong, strong year for Arizona above what the uh, United States average uh, GDPs are and, and population controls are doing. So what do you expect? Single digit housing appreciation, they're saying. Um, so although we were at 18% this year, we're anticipating to be between 8 and 10% uh, for 2022. Uh, unit volume will remain about the same. So you'll see about the same sales uh, volume that we had last year, about maybe a 3 to 5% increase. And your inventory, as far as the, uh, you know, is going to be concerned, if we're not above 2,500 units per week, uh, our inventory is going to uh, maintain pretty much the way it is today. And, and so we really can't anticipate that there's going to be any great gains uh, coming from that. So Mike, that's the uh, numbers uh, and that's what we're sticking to. All right. Um, I know I'm catching you off guard no, here, so I know you don't you may not know the answer, but where were we as far as median, uh, you know, sales price or, or value prior to the crash? Because, you know, a lot of what I'm trying to explain to my clients, this, this appreciation and this growth is really more in part of Phoenix getting to where it needs to be as far as being the fifth largest city, you know, in the nation. So I was kind of, I don't know whether you know yeah. offhand. You know, the, the numbers that stick in, the, in my head mostly, if you go back a couple of slides, then we can go back to uh, one more. Uh, Let's see. Um, yep, right there. So if you look up, you'll see the average median price right there uh, up a little higher. So let's just go back a little more. But uh, next one up. Yep. So median price there. We ended the year at 440,000. Uh, we started the year at 372. That was the 18 percent, which is why I was saying yep. that's what the appreciation was basically for 2022, yep. not the average sale price. So. Yeah. So where are we headed for 2020? Well, I just um, meant like, do you know, yeah. like, you know, how do we how are we comparing to prior to the market crash of 07, 08, 09, as far as, you know, offhand? Uh, yeah, we'd have to go. <laughs> OK, <laughs> right, well, well yeah, no, well. no, just just right here. It's real simple to get to. Um, here it is right here. So if you look over on the right hand side in the blue columns and you find the median sale price, which is just up here um, and you scroll your eyes, you, uh, we were at uh, 425. Uh, in December, and basically we started the year at uh, 430. Uh, we started at 332, 322. Okay. So it was an increase of about uh, five, uh, about five percent. So where were we in 2007? Uh, it, well, back in yeah, good point. Yeah, where were we? That's <laughs> that, true. That was yeah. the question. Yeah. Well, 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 that was yeah. No, yeah, I had 2019 up there, but I yeah, I didn't have 2007. Right. So uh, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate. It. I'm going to look into that. I'm that. Yeah. really, really curious because that's one that. of the arguments that I'm making is is we are we're getting to you know we're where we need to be. We're the Absolutely. fifth largest city, you know. So it's not a matter of just outrageous appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of I, for me the market correcting itself in the yeah. sense of where we need to be at home prices. Yeah. So. Good point. All righty. So with that being said and done, excited as always, every single year, uh, we bring on our uh, president and CEO of West USA Realty, Clint Fouts. Uh, so first of all, congratulations. I hear your daughter got married this weekend. She did. She did. My last one and it's over. All right. So now <laughs> you're making money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I added two more kids to my family. So I don't know. Yeah. I really got rid of anything. I just got two extras. And, and more bedrooms? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank goodness well, they're on their own. All right. Well, so, uh, you know, we're, I want to get into, uh, you know, a little bit about, you know, the recap of what 2021 looked like for us and and what's in store for West USA as far as 2022. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I commonly hear 
uh, when I'm out and about and talking with agents. And one of the things that agents love most about West USA is its family feel. Mm -hmm. Though we are a large brokerage, everybody feels like it's it, it's part of the family. And and I was thinking about that over the weekend, and and I can't help but think that that is truly one of the legacies left behind by, you know, by your father, Clay. And so I want to get into that, you know, obviously for the Fouts family, um, 2021 was challenging and rough, you know, with the passing of uh, first your father, who is the founder mm -hmm. of West USA Realty, and then probably more important to the person who actually made West USA work, <laughs> uh, <laughs> your, your, your mom, uh, Diane. So, uh, so, you know, what changes should should we expect as agents, um, you know, with the passing of your parents? And, you know, what does that look like for us? Well, if you if you look back at kind of what my father started the company, I was 16 years old um, when he started the company. He started it. Um, he's, he loved agency. He wanted something for the family. And quite honestly, if you if I look back at that or the way he ran the company is he never really made a decision or made anything going forward without at least talking to 90 percent of us and what's going forward, asking our opinions, asking what's going on, asking the agents um, what they feel that we should do. And he just kind of went forward with it. So about six, seven years ago, when I took a more prominent role, I'm probably a little longer than that, but um, he really started backing off and he, he just had less and less of the decisions and he kind of let us take it over. So the past four or five years, I don't think he's had too much to say or do. He's been always was there with an ear, always overlooked it, um, asked the right questions, but really just sat back and watched the company run and, and was able to, um, I don't know, appreciate the fact that what he built and be able to see it run. Um, I think anybody around the family that saw that was able to see that and, so overall, the company is what he set out to be, which was kind of self-run by itself and kind of do it. He set the rules and the and how we make decisions are still the same. It was what it was when he started, and we'll continue to keep doing that. You know, uh, you know, I, I had many conversations with him, and, and obviously, um, he had challenges with apps, phones, text messages, <laughs> emails, anything that was related to uh, technology. Um, but I always, you know, loved you know, sitting down and talking with him from an agent perspective mm -hmm. of, of how he took care of his clients and, and how he operated his business. And for me, that was one of the biggest impacts for me because a lot of the principles, a lot of the things that him and I talked about over lunch, I apply specifically today to my business. I just, technology enhances some of that, okay. but it's just, he was, he was so approachable Decent. and I, you know, everybody just, you know, adored him. But, you know, with that, you know, with his passing, um, rumors start to fly. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and people say this, people say that, you know, rumors are really basically uneducated assumptions. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, what, what are some of the rumors maybe that you've heard or some of the things that we need to be aware of that we can, we can just put to bed right now? <laughs> well, well, the biggest one you, you can imagine is I had an agent call me, um, about a month ago and asked if we were trying to sell the business. And I was like, no, why? Where'd you hear that? And apparently another agent somewhere along a competitor, an agent, somebody had told them that we were trying to sell, actively sell. Hmm. I can assure you personally that there is no activity in trying to sell this business. We have no intentions of selling this business and what you say is not for sale. Um, good for that agent to call you, though. He heard something. Yeah. I mean, good, good on him. Yeah. And um, if anybody out there hears that or somebody tells them that, if encourage them to reach out to any one of us here at corporate and talk to us, um, let us know where it came from. If they won't do it and you're up to it, call and let us know who it is so we can contact them to let them know. Um, open book, come on in, sit down, talk to us. We'll, we'll tell you exactly what's going on. And bring a burger. Going. Bring a burger. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think one of the other things that, that we hear and maybe, maybe not, you know, produced by, you know, recruiters from other brokerages is, is really trying to create this um, aurora of instability that, you know, with the passing of Clay, um, that the company now is unstable and, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Nobody would do that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, all right. So uh, let's um, let's talk about 2021. That was a banner year for for just about everybody, but more importantly, um, just an incredible year, not only for West USA, but more importantly for the agents, because you know without the agents, there is no West USA. That is true. Um, I'll go over the numbers we had for 2021, and I just want to be very apparent. These are not. West USA at corporate's numbers. These are our agents' numbers. Our agents have went out and did this work. We facilitate it. We go through it. But without our agents doing these, we wouldn't be able to be one of the largest real estate brokers in Arizona. It just wouldn't happen. Um, so 2021, we were able to put in about 22,000 transactions. Um, and those are pretty good numbers. We had a sales volume of $6.4 billion. Jeez. So, and I had two billion of that. Two billion. Ah. <laughs> it's a 22 percent, 22 and a half percent increase over 2020 um, at West USA. And these are West USA numbers only. I know Todd went over the Mar Maricopa County um, armless numbers, but these are specific to West USA. Um, we had 153 million dollars in commissions given out to our agents, wow. which was a 23 percent increase of commissions to our agents. Um, so those are pretty strong numbers. Um, we continue to keep seeing an increase. Our agents continue to keep figuring out ways to put transaction. Everybody talked about how the inventory, this, whatever. Well, unfortunately they found the inventory somewhere <laughs> as Todd would talk to you all the time about the numbers, but it's there. We are agent count wise. We're right around 31, 3,200 agents and continue to keep growing there. Um, that being said, we're always looking for new locations around town and, um, Expanding as the freeways come in, as Todd talked about, we're always wanting to facilitate those areas, outlying areas that are have enough growth that we can maintain an office. So we're always looking to grow that still, um, and we'll continue to keep looking to do that. Um, I want to take a moment and really kind of talk about our 2021 with everything going on with COVID and being sick and losses through our agents and through this, some of the family members, myself included, um, our staff had really put our agents first. Um, we've had individuals having to drive across town to cover offices that they normally wouldn't have to cover. Um, if you've ever had to change hats and move across town and do something in a whole different environment, it's it's not the easiest thing to do. And and our staff really stepped up and did that, whether it's the manager, the front staff, loaders, anything we've actually had to maintain our agents' production and be able to get those offices open so they can get their offices done. Um, I really want to hand it to our, if you, if you go into the office in the next day or so, and you see the staff, just thank them, um, cause they did it. And I want to thank you for everything you've done in this last year and everything you've been through. Um, but we're de definitely are truly a family and, um, we stick together. So with that, you know, you know, you'd mentioned we're, you know, anywhere between 31 and 3,200 agents. Um, a lot of agents recently have come on board in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. They they take a look at that number and they're like, wow, that's that's staggering. And then yet they're hearing us talk about family feel. What advice do you have for the newer agents, you know, as far as getting plugged in and, and, and the accessibility of staff and corporate staff and so forth? Well, we worked really hard. If you're a new agent coming on, just West, you say period, and, and you haven't met Patty, then you're doing yourself disjustice. You're doing it wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> with, with West USA, one of the things um, any broke kind of had was a complaint we had. One of the surveys said that they were got on, they kind of felt like they were dropped and they didn't know what to do. And it's hard to figure out what everybody exactly needs. It's, you know, we, we don't have a crystal ball to sit in front of us that says this agent needs this and this agent needs that. So we brought on this Patty, which is the onboarding concierge that kind of sits down with you, goes over everything you need, kind of points you in the right direction and make sure you're up to the standard levels of knowing where to get your information from, there what's going on. We have a check sheet to know exactly, to make sure you've gotten everything. I would strongly suggest just clear your head, sit down, go through it, and then work with her and figure out what you're needing, what you need, go through and absorb all of it that you can. Your manager is always there to help after that assist and go forward with it. Um, but just please just sit down and do that part. If you haven't, maybe you've been with West USA for a while and you're looking at maybe this new year and thinking of what we can do to change and you'd like to go and sit with Patty, she'll 100% take you, sit down and go through it. Your manager will do the same thing. 
Um, any of our teams and managers will do the same thing. So just plug in as much as you can and figure out what it is. We could do just about everything and anything you need. That's what my father set out to do is for real estate, whether it being commercial or biz op or regular transactions or anything or land, we have the systems in place to be able to help you get there. All right. And if uh, you're newer and you're not familiar with it, just, you know, another cheap plug next Monday, we're doing another agent orientation. Yeah. Great opportunity to, to truly learn everything that, that we have to offer. Because I think when agents, and we'll have agents show up to orientation that have been with West USA for a couple of years, and they're just overwhelmed, like, I, well, not overwhelmed, just like, I didn't yeah. I didn't know we had that. Because we offer so much, mm -hmm. it's hard to, to get all of that information out. Well, let's talk about uh, 2022 and what what can we expect as agents as far as the direction and, and the focus and the support um, and the goals for, for us as agents and the rest of the company? Well, it's interesting because you, my father used to always say too, is the new year for an agent is weird because you wake up New Year's Day and you're back to zero. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you did last year, you're back to zero, you got to start over. That's a good thing and a bad thing in the same range. But if you did a good year last year, you could sit down and, and think, what can I do to reproduce that and improve that a little bit? If you're not happy with what you did last year, you could just not worry about it, move forward with a brand new year and figure out what you're going to do to increase it. Um, that being said, in, in is a lot larger companies are coming in and they're competing with you guys um, for market share. And there's one thing you guys have that they don't, which is a personal touch. You guys have that personal touch, relationship, everything else. That being said, the marketing piece, if you're struggling and you're looking to better your numbers, I would strongly suggest you look at your teams and any division within the company to look at, to, to try to join some of them. They, they're they doing a great job within numbers of being able to put together, um, joining a team. They have a marketing plan. They have everything else they put together. Make sure that the teams align with your what you want and you see. And just join them or a division within the company, whether it's the coaching or any of them, a Relo or any of the divisions, just reach out to the manager, say, here's where you're trying to go. What should I do? How can I get there? And then we'll put you with the right people in the right places to at least to interview and look and see what that's the direction you want to go. I'd like to talk a little just for a minute. Um, you know, I think for a lot of agents, if, if 2021, you didn't meet those expectations and or you're new, uh, you know, as far as the personnel, we, we've, we've made a couple changes to our coaching program. And I mean, I think our <laughs> our head coach, you know, you know, with with Patty and especially with Sue Fluky, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if you can get any better than that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know. Everybody calls Sue from around the country when they when they have questions mm -hmm. uh and and so let's talk about that talk about the changes to that because you know it, whether it's a team or uh, the reload program or the coaching division i you know i'm a firm believer especially with the competition today that this is not an industry meant to be done alone yeah that that is true so when we you know change is good sometimes it's always hard to get over it but you look back on things sometimes the change is the better um, when we were looking for another master coach, um, we were sitting there, we had some applicants come in, we we're looking at new applications. And then I think Nick one day says, Hey, what about <laughs> Patty? And I'm like, that was oh. his one idea for 2021. That buddy. was it. That's you woke gets, up January yeah, yeah. 1st, you're at zero. <laughs> <laughs> so without even talking to them, we started playing around what that looked like and what was going on. We really thought it'd be a really good match. Um, so we just brought them in and kind of probably sold it to them and, and kind of told them how does he be great for him. And, and quite honestly, they've done a great job. Um, they brought the managers up to speed with what's going on. Um, some of the problems we had is communication with being open. And quite honestly, two of them are completely open with everything going on. Brought the managers into speed, brought the, the coaches up where they were more information. Um, information is the key part of this, any transaction through your team or whether you're in a division or anything, it's just knowing what's going on and getting information so you could make those decisions. Um, so we're really happy with moving forward in 2022 with that. We've already seen a pretty good increase um, in closing rates and stuff like that. And what we're the end product is to the agent and being able to just close a transaction coming into this business. So what else do we have in store for uh, 2022? Where, where, where are we looking to do any any other goals that we're, we've got our eyes set on? 
Uh, just trying to get our production into that range and get our agents, trying to see what we could do with our agents. We have a graphic person. Um, we have two of them, actually. Nick's other shaking oh, his I head. might have fired him this morning. Um, we did the announcements, FYI. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've always had a, a, a plan to have a couple of graphic people to have more time. Um, We've had one for quite a while, and it seems like we don't get enough time to put stuff together for our agents. Is just kind of what we do the bare minimum to keep the brokerage running. And this last year, we've increased that, but to have two. And and they're finally getting their head above water until this meeting here, and now they're <laughs> going to be back underwater. But <laughs> but being able to provide things to our agents um, is our next goal this next year and, and making our agents look better. Yeah, good. No, uh, one of the things that uh, we also did this year, which I think is something that Clint, maybe you can uh, shed some additional light on, was the success of our recruiting program based upon our own agents. Oh well, I don't know if that's an increase or not, but that's well, always been. I think yeah. I think seventy, eighty percent of our agents that are being recruited are from other agents coming in, and um, I think that's always been natural. And when I when I came in, my father, we didn't really have a recruiter. We didn't necessarily have it. Was always been word of mouth from our agents. Our agents have always joined here and loved it here and always spread that across. So um, that's one of the things I think I did originally. We caught in, we brought a recruiter in um, full time and ex expanded on that and had agents hand and still our agents just hand them, hey, here's this person and helps with that transition. Um, I don't want to make our agents recruiters by any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah. But of course, if you're happy where you're at and you have other people on cross sales or anything else, and they're struggling or having problems, we're always here. Um, we try to do the best thing we can for our agents. That's our motto, and um, it seems to be working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and until just really quickly back on the on the graphic design piece, it's something that we've wanted to do for a while, and Clint's been trying to get us to that position. And I think we definitely are. And, um, you know, having the graphic design team that we have allows our realtors at West USA to have support when it comes to branding their businesses. It's something that Mike and I and the corporate staff talk about all the time. You are a business entrepreneur. One of the most difficult things about being a business entrepreneur is marketing. And to have a graphic design team that are professionals in their field be able to work with our agents and the agents can say, I'm looking for business cards, listing signs, help with logo design, overall branding. That's what that team is there to do. And I know we were really excited to be able to roll that out. We've been kind of soft rolling it, letting uh, people who come to us and ask for help. I think this is the first real big announcement that we've made on that piece. Um, so sorry, CJ and Haley. Uh, but they're, <laughs> you know, they're there ready and willing to help. Um, so all for all of our agents, uh, we're just going to kick it out. If you go to westusamarketing.com, you're going to find a, a, a intake form that's going to allow you to explain what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish, and then really start that conversation with this group of people to grow your branding. Uh, so we're really excited about that, and we look forward to more of our realtors getting the opportunity to work directly with these two individuals. Uh, and again, it's something that when I started here nine, 10 years ago in June, when I was working with Clay and listening to him do staff conversations and talking about you know, why West USA is around, you know, when I got kind of put in the position five years ago uh, when Clint and Todd kind of tapped me to help work with them more closely on stuff, the conversation didn't change. We're still always there thinking about what we can do for our agents. The coaching program specifically, I mean, not to give away too much, but we're opening the coaching program up to other divisions here really soon. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of individuals that have come to us and said they want to give back now and teach, teach how to get agents more inclined on doing their specific type of real estate, um, which isn't just residential. Um, so we're excited to be doing those nice. things. And these things come because this is what Clint and Clay and the Fouts family established 36 years <laughs> ago. It's become an organic thing, which is really fun to be a part of. And uh, conversations at the corporate office aren't all that hard. Someone comes to us with an issue. Was well, is it good for the agent? So good for what she was saying. Okay, then let's go forth and do it. Let's just figure it out how. So I mean, it's a really cool thing to get to sit in these conversations, to be a part of webinars and meetings and orientations that give back to just real estate as a whole in Arizona. You know, and it also speaks to the importance of that survey that Mike shared earlier with your opportunity to win some uh, gas cards. Um, is the fact that each year 
the responses from those surveys, if you want to have your voice heard, that's the place to have your voice heard, uh, is, is, is fill out that survey, send it in, be honest. You know, if something is not up to par, let us know if something's better than par, let us know the success you've had on it, because we're always looking for testimonies as well to help other people realize that it isn't us pushing it upon agents. It's the fact that it really has an impact on your business. And this is all about you. And when you're filling out the part that says the things you like about West USA, the last name is spelled W E I T K A M P. <laughs> Way to make it about you, pal. Way to make it about you. Well, uh, uh, one of the things I think, one of the, I'm not going to say struggles, but one of the biggest issues uh, we've seen uh, in the last couple of years uh, really just comes down to security and and security be our, our security being compromised as agents and and representing our clients and and, and so forth. What is West USA, you know, help, doing to help us with that? Well, we, our tech team here, the, the tech support is always there to help. Um, but unfortunately, it's up to our agents to take a look and see what they're doing, exposing their clients' information, doing certain things. So you just have to make sure if there's two things I could tell you to do would be one is to see if you have a forward in your email. I don't care what email system you use. Well, I do, but I don't care at this particular <laughs> moment which one you're using. Go into your forwards. Make sure that there's no forwards in there that you don't know about because the first thing they do is they go in they take the forwards they add their own forward in there and then they go back to the house and they just keep watching everything you're typing and doing until the right moment so make sure that you don't have a forward if you do have a forward get rid of it if you have a forward in there that you don't know about report it to tech support as soon as you can change your password and get rid of that forward just delete it remove it um that's and again, just changing your password on a regular team base. I know nobody likes to do it, but it is one of the things that can really help security and safety. They're not, everybody thinks that the scamming is really some kind of weird thing where they're putting things on your computer. They're not. All they're doing is ca they're putting things on your computer for links so they can capture your passwords. They're going in behind the scene of your passwords and they're putting just things that are very, you can see them forwards. It's not that they're hiding them. So if they're, if you have a forward, and you don't know what that forward is, remove it ASAP, change your password, report that to tech support. If I, uh, if I woke up this morning and my wife bet me a million dollars, she said, Clint's going to teach you something that you don't know <laughs> about security and technology. I would have taken that bet. I, <laughs> I didn't know that. I wrote it down. I'm now, I'm anxious to get back to my computer real <laughs> quick. Check your forwards. <laughs> Do it today. Do it. I'm serious. That is the number one thing. 99% of the time when we have this issue in anything, title company or anything else, they're finding somewhere where somebody's email is exposed and has a forward going to somewhere that they had no idea where it was coming from. I um, I will say this. You're, I'm, not, I'm not speaking for you because I don't want to get you into trouble. But in my experience dealing with agents and as an agent, we are inherently cheap. Um, we don't like to pay for a lot and, 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 and we're really spoiled. Um, I have a ton of relationships with, with other teams from around the nation. And the their fee structures and the type of brokerages out there. I, I'm just telling you, here in Arizona, being part of a 100% company, we are 100% absolutely spoiled. And our <laughs> monthly fees, um, they're ridiculously low. Um, and where where we stand on that? Where are we going with fees? Are we expecting any fee increases? Well, we always meet. Um look at the financial, look at everything going forward. And we've made the decision not to increase our fees this coming year. Um, hopefully not in any coming future years. <laughs> um, but we are seeing a lot of competitors. This came from the recruiters and different people coming in. So they're seeing the competitors are running around and raising the rates and seeing that. And I think it's a good time for most brokers to say, hey, this is a great time. Everything else is going up. Let's do it too. We've made the choice not to do that. We've had something in the works for um, – re-implementing our late fees. Um, we've been, we sent a letter out, I think just before COVID mm -hmm. and then we backed off because of COVID. Um, we have a deal. You know, we, we stopped our late fees back when 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. <laughs> when the, everything crashed. Um, so we will be implementing that here pretty soon. Um, it's a 10% on a rotating base. So it's not a huge amount, but it is something that we just got to get that income coming in to maintain our bills the correctly way we need to do it. Um, so we do have auto payment set up. So if you 
Go in your dashboard, set the auto payment up. Should be no issues. That's the dashboard ding. Oh, that's the dashboard ding? Yeah. So you don't listen to the webinar during <laughs> any of the week. Once a year. <laughs> yeah. So, but go in there. Uh, make sure you have the auto payment set up. Not just a one-time occurrence. There is another button you click that says auto payment is set up. So it's just done automatically. Most of our agents have that set up. Um, so if you don't, you know, go and do that for your convenience. Um, you get an email saying it's going to be done. And you shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, other than that, I think I got every, oh, nope, I have another one. So we just had our Christmas party. <laughs> yes, we did. So <laughs> we reached back out to them. We locked in a date for December 10th, Ooh. 2022. Ooh. There we go. I'm writing that down. <laughs> and then the pizza party immediately following. And the, the pizza party. <laughs> right <laughs> on the recon group. <laughs> So we're excited to have that back. I think that's our second one. Um, that, was, that was amazing. That was amazing. I was, uh, I, you know, I didn't know really what to expect as far as attendance goes. Um, but, man, that was a lot of, it was a great, great event. Yeah. My wife even had a good time. That's when you know you've done a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, I think the first year we had it, um, we partnered with CARES. We had 300 agents yeah, around, about that. 300, yeah, yeah. 300 or agents. So. With the COVID stuff going on, we figured we'd be about the same. We relaunched it um, this last year. with we, tis, we anticipated about the same attendance, and we ended up having to expand the room three different times to where we were at the largest room possible. I think we still ended up with right around 700 people yep. that was amazing. in attendance, um, which just blew us away. The unfortunate part is we were at their largest room. Yeah. We have no room to expand our capacity this year so when we do release the tickets please get on there as quick as you can nick knows how much it kills me and hates to tell people that we're sold out because mm -hmm. i don't want to i mean literally like we're sold out i'm like we're going back to the venue to find a bigger room Correct. i don't want to tell anybody that we're sold out and um so we did that twice or three times actually the third time eventually the second time we thought we were done and they finally came back the third time and said well, if you have that many people, we need to move to the biggest room. There's a bigger room. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we okay, hiding we'll that? <laughs> yeah. So this year we did book the largest room. We're anticipating the same amount of numbers, I think, with just the amount of people talking about everything else with 3,000. By then we'll have 4,000 agents. There's going to be probably more than 700. We're probably going to have to sell out. Um, so yeah. I don't know how many people can fit in Mike's penthouse suite yeah. that night. So. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I, there, I. Oh, good. No, there we we do have um, negotiated room rates. I don't remember exactly what they are, but I would encourage you to jump on that as quick as you can too. It was cheap. Yeah, Just it was the very fact expensive. of being able to go there that night, stay in a five-star hotel um, resort style downtown was pretty amazing. Not have to drive home and everything else. Well, uh, we got about two more minutes left, so I'd like just to end with this and, and just add uh, an additional comment to, about the fees and, and the late fees. Uh, obviously, I'm not privy to uh, the financials of West USA, but I, I can't, you know, I can't, I, I have to assume that we run pretty much, you know, on a thin margin. Um, because we don't charge our agents enough. And then I know agents get upset about lay fees and so forth. Um, we offer our agents the amount of program support and technology mm -hmm. uh, that we offer. If we were like other brokerages that didn't offer all of those things, your margins would be <laughs> would be a lot bigger. Yeah. And and so it's important, I mean, to, to, to pay the fee. It's that, you know... Whether you're on the $25 a month plan, two ten $10 a month plan, at the end of the day, especially when you take a look at other brokerages across the nations, it is absolutely nothing. But this is, those are, those fees are why we have the support and the training and the technology that we have. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, as far as the late fees, just real quick, um, I also wanted to say we passed uh, the uh, company audit, the uh, ADRE audit with flying colors, of course, uh, which is typical to West USA's history. However, one of the things that they identified was the fact that uh, we needed to implement the late fee process, uh, restart it because of the fact that they always feel, and this is the department, you know, that if you penalize somebody, their 
they're more likely to financially, they're more likely to comply. So uh, please understand that, you know, this is also an effort to ensure that everybody doesn't get in trouble. We're here to protect you as well. Uh, and then just the final piece is wherever you are in your business, if you are struggling uh, or you'd like to achieve more and you nobody knows about it, your office manager doesn't know about it, coaches don't know about it, leadership at West USA doesn't know about it, we are here to help you get what you want out of life and out of real estate. So I implore you, please reach out to your office manager, um, reach out to any one of us in the company, any one of us, Clint, myself, Nick, Mike, anybody, um, and share with us what you need or where you'd like to go and allow us to give you that opportunity and that help. Uh, because if you're a brand new agent or you're an experienced, you've been or had a license for a long time and you're not hitting your goals, we have, uh, we can help you if you share that you, where you're headed. Yeah. So please so, do that. Um, thanks Clint. Um, and I'll just end with this. Uh, not a week goes by <laughs> that I don't get a phone call trying to get recruited to another brokerage. Most of the time it's from a brokerage that has three letters in its name. I'm not going to, not going to call ABC. them out. I'm not going to call them out by name uh, and so forth. And it's just, you know, they always say you satisfied, you're happy with your brokerage and, and you guys and the family and, and, and your staff make it a very easy and short conversation for me because, you know, we're incredibly happy. Uh, and you guys do so much for not only for us, but, you know, for the rest of West USA. So we thank you. We leave everybody you, with the quote of the day from Abraham Lincoln. Always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other. Appreciate you joining us. Go out and sell a home. <laughs>